In this lecture, together with my colleague Cristina Gallego, I will introduce you to the possibilities of agriculture in the city with a focus on the experiences with community gardens. Historically, the main characteristic of the agricultural space that fed the city were proximity and immediacy. Over time, the city voraciously traded the surrounding farmland for more lucrative uses. This development not only meant changes in the food supply, it is also a loss of cultural identity for some, as well as impoverishment of biodiversity. The awareness of the negative effects of biodiversity loss does not only belong to our time. A need for a strategy for the promotion of biodiversity in the city arose as early as in the 17th century. In 1661, the English writer and gardener John Evelyn, known for his, his knowledge of trees, proposed to fill the environs of London with tree plantations and small, delimited orchards of vegetables and aromatic flowers. The purpose was to mitigate the effects of the city smoke and generate the triad health, beauty, and profit. In this way, the city and environs about might be rendered one of the most pleasant and agreeable places in the world, wrote Evelyn. At the end of the 19th century, the Garden City movement proposed urban expansion based on satellite towns as the overcoming of the countryside city dialectic. In this example, the peripheral farmland within natural spaces make up a green matrix. Nowadays, this agricultural belt is interpreted as agricultural parks. On the other side, the development of transport and technique of food production and preservation led to progressive relocation of farmlands. For example, the USA multinational United Fruit Company advanced the development of our present global food system. One of the antecedents of the community gardens was established in New York in the beginning of the 20th century. A philanthropic initiative of agricultural gardens linked to urban parks, which had a pedagogical purpose. Another example of community gardens is found in Chicago in 1920s. A garden project that serves as a race integration tool as well. Today, community gardening and urban farming is spreading in the cities all over the world. Often they work as a kind of participatory event and often on request from citizens. Some are supported by municipal authorities, while others are driven privately or by non-profit organizations. The gardens are often located in urban spaces that are not of interest for speculation, either because of their legal planning protection or because the place is not suitable for development, which implies an improvement in the security and the quality of the environment of neighborhood where they are located. Community garden serves several purposes, to grow food and plants, learn new skills and meet people. Various organizations, such as the UN, support these initiatives in many low- and middle-income countries. Community garden questions the value that is inherent to disciplinary urbanism. They do not need a large economic investment for a startup. Nonprofit organizations or other volunteers are usually responsible for the leadership and for proposing strategies. They are usually temporary. The land use permission predominates over the ownership of the site. They can be open for the public or restrict for private users as planned or spontaneous projects. They can flexibly fit into small pockets offered by the city. For example, Areas surrounding infrastructures or rooftops, as here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard farm, were 
1.5 acres is used for gardening and beekeeping. Urban gardens can be located nearby cultural, educational or social institutions to benefit the physical as well as mental health and well-being of its users. Urban biodiversity is promoted. Some are established as therapeutic gardens and provide occupation, as well as sensory stimuli and beauty, and sometimes to selected vulnerable population groups. The ones that are not only meant for self-consumption contribute to the circular economy at a neighborhood scale. Cultivation is often based on principles of sustainability using traditional agricultural practices, reuse of resources generated such as organic fertilizer or wastewater in closed cycles with the aim to produce healthy food. Community garden is a valuable resource for socialization and for social integration. It is a meeting place for the transfer and intergenerational knowledge and a pedagogical and environmental education resource, not only for children. My colleague, Cristina Gallego, will now present you examples of some community garden projects. An example of a community garden is the Scottswood Natural Garden, promoted by a charity that aims to promote learning about nature, the environment, and sustainable living. It is conceived as a place where the community and the wildlife meet. The site itself comprises two and a half acres with a combination of organic garden containing ponds, meadows, woodland, sensory garden, ochres, sculptures, and artistic elements. Further, organic fruit and vegetables are grown in plots. This space is open to voluntary community activities, offering activities such as beekeeping for school programs, gardening for dementia, and permaculture training sessions. Apart from promoting human health and well-being, the trainings and social activities also have the potential to promote climate change mitigation by addressing environmental challenges such as air pollution, floods, and droughts. Another example of an urban space which has undergone a green development is a former area for social housing emptied after demolition and left abandoned for more than three decades. The project is situated in the Canillejas area of Madrid and is called Imagine a Park. When the project was initiated back in 2010, the non-profit organization Otro Habitat proposed to the primary school Alameda next to the plot to turn the plot into an educational project. Pupils were involved in the development from the start. First, they analyzed the area through field visits, interviews with neighbors and visits to the adult learning center in the area. Later on, the people shared their ideas by building a model of their vision and invited the community to engage in the transformation of the site. As a result, the pupils and their families decided to transform the area into a garden with a playground and sport areas. It is also included a flower garden, as you can see in this collage, representing all the ideas for the project. To make this happen, the temporary use of the site was requested to the owners, public and private ones. The pupils and their families were actively involved in the transformation of the space, contributing in organizing and practical building the place. This led to a feeling of identity, belonging and commitment to take care of and maintain the place. The new area was built nearby the school, which reinforced the relationship with the giving community. Unfortunately, after a few years, the new directive of the school decided to withdraw from the project. This caused again the degeneration of the plot, until a group of neighbors organized themselves to give the space a fourth life 
and a startup of a urban community garden. The use of the space has thus changed its identity along the way, from a social housing area to an abandoned plot for the gates, then an adventure park, and now a community garden. So the main lessons learned are, first, the importance of a leadership and responsibility to manage and control the access to the space. Secondly, the barrier of the ownership of the space that determines the real possibility to agree the transfer of rights to use the space by the community for a community project. Thirdly, the great environmental and social value of these community gardens and green spaces. And finally, the flexibility and changing conditions of these spaces. The positive impact of such interventions in the urban context are multiple, entailing social, environmental, economic and public health improvements. The urban agro projects create spaces for collective learning and interaction, and in turn, the promotion of healthy living. From an environmental point of view, bringing natural capital to the city is essential. From an economic perspective, these spaces contribute to reduce the contamination and adapting cities to climate change, which lead also to reduction of health and replacement costs. So, why not introduce more agro in our cities? <laughs>